Hi everyone, this is another episode of the Voices for Voices TV show and podcast. I'm your host, Justin Allen Hayes, founder and executive director of Voices for Voices. The change up. What's the change up? And what does the band Fallout Boy, the Iceland Volcano, and a job interview have in common? Well, we're going to talk about that today. So just a few minutes ago, was driving in my car, had the radio turned up, and the fallout boy, we didn't start the fire, was on. So for those who don't know, that was a classic uh, tune that was uh, written and performed by Billy Joel many years ago. And fallout boy took that same song, the same beat, and updated the names and current events from the time that the previous song that Billy Joel put out to current day. And one of the lines in the song talks briefly about the Iceland volcano. So that's connection number one. And then connection number two of the Iceland volcano in an interview. What's the change up? How's all this come together? So early in my career, I was working for a steel company called the Timken Company. They also produce roller bearings as well. That's, uh, that's what they're mainly known for. So I'd been working there for uh, close to close to five years, uh, right out of right out of college, right out of Youngstown State, and everything was going well. I was learning, I was growing uh, professionally, personally. Uh, again, uh, decided to head back to school. Uh, to get my master's of business administration. So once that degree was earned, once I earned that degree, and then coming up close to about five years uh, of working at the Timken Company, I decided to start looking uh, for uh, another job. And sometimes in life, we decide to start looking for a job. Sometimes it's on our own, meaning that uh, we're still employed and we're looking for a new position or, which has happened to me as well as being uh, involuntarily let go from a, an organization. Otherwise saying, you're fired. You know, so Donald Trump, you know, is famous for, for saying, you're fired. And the apprentice and either way you're looking for a new job you're looking to uh, maybe have uh, a greater title uh, make more money uh, move potentially to a new and attractive city that you or uh, family and loved ones are, are, are living and that excitement take takes over and so you start looking for a new job. So that's what I did. I started looking for a new job locally here in Northeast Ohio and also nationally, call it. And the position uh, the, the, we're, we're going to be talking about today and the change up uh, refers to uh, the job that I uh, applied to. Uh, the organization is called Teneris. They make uh, steel uh, tubing, predominantly for the oil and gas market. And so at the time, Teneris was looking to expand their international presence from not only having the headquarters in Buenos Aires, Argentina, but also bringing that brand and presence to North America. So they set up shop in Houston, Texas. 
Houston, Texas, distance from uh, where, where I, I live and lived at, at the time was just over a thousand miles. To apply to a position, it was a step up title-wise. It was a couple steps up uh, salary-wise, dollar-wise, and apply. So I went through the process, logged onto the website, the job profile, uh, set all that up, up, uploaded my resume, uh, answered a few questions, and like many other job applications, sent that in. In a very short time, I, I would say, uh, I, I received some feedback and it was very short in that I applied for uh, the position. I went and took a shower, finished my shower, went and checked my email and I had already received a message from uh, the recruiter or the human resource representative from Teneris. And they were responding to my job application that I had I'd sent in. Uh, so here, let's call it less than an hour time, uh, received some feedback. And the next step was to have a phone interview. And that's one of the methods and ways organizations can uh, learn more about us and we can learn more about them and their organization, uh, the job, the title, the salary, uh, and all that, all that good stuff. So set up a future time to talk, have that conversation, and receive feedback that they would like to have a, another phone interview, but not with the uh, human resource rep or recruiter, but with the hiring manager and a couple of their colleagues. So scheduled that and went through that process, answered dozens of questions and left that phone interview feeling pretty good feeling like I answered the questions well, uh, that I expressed my uh, intent and willingness uh, to go on with the job process, uh, to, uh, if everything worked out, uh, relocate to Houston, Texas. And then a short period of time after that, uh, maybe a week or two went by, and then the job search uh, market uh, at this time, uh, you know, hearing back in a, in a week or two, especially for a job in a, in a different city, a different area, uh, it was, was really a short period of time. And back at that time, we, we didn't really have Zoom, uh, Zoom platforms. Now we had Skype and, and a couple other platforms and, and Zoom was, was out there. But what I mean by not having the Zoom platform, I mean, not in totality, in that I could have all my interviews from the uh, confines of my, my house. And so the next step with the interest of Teneris, the hiring manager and a couple of their colleagues and myself was, to fly down to Houston, Texas, and meet in person with the team. Just as I had done over the phone, this was to be in person in Houston, Texas. So some questions I, I've received about this are, they asked you to fly down and pay for your own ticket and pay for your own hotel and transportation. And in my case, the organization paid for that. So well, I made the purchase, picked out the flight, uh, picked out the hotel and, and the transportation, which ended up being, uh, I believe it was a taxi, like a five minute ride from the hotel to uh, the, uh, the, the job location. And then I was reimbursed. So reimbursed means that you or I make a purchase, we have the receipts, that shows that, that purchase. 
we fill out uh, a form, could be in a Microsoft Excel or another format, Concur, uh, all kinds of all kinds of platforms. You can you can submit that information, and then once all that was submitted, uh, you know, scan the receipt, send send all that in. Uh, then I was uh, sent a check in the mail for the expenses for the interview. And this was before any offer was extended uh, or any acceptance of the the offer. So whether things move forward or they didn't. Uh, those expenses, uh, I was going to be reimbursed. So that was a big question I had. I was like, I don't, I don't have the money to be able to to do this, to just fly all over the place and uh, and and have these interviews. Not sure if the organization's serious uh, and moving forward with me or or not. So plan the trip, fly down, stay at a hotel for for a night. In the morning, I was to meet with uh, the individuals, uh, the hiring manager, a few colleagues, and, and hiring manager's boss or manager. And so one of the things that was attractive about this position was not only the salary increase, not only the title increase, but that my department led up to management in Milan, Italy. And... For me, coming out of school, working for a truly international business that has uh, headquarters outside of the United States, and predominantly, in this case, Italy, because I had done my international business class at Youngstown State University, uh, and we went to Italy and saw a ton of businesses, uh, you know, Prada, Gusto Westland, uh, domestic winery, international wineries, uh, Diebold, uh, just to name a few. And so that's one of those things that helped guide my decision at the time. So the plan was to have the hiring manager and their manager who reside at the office of Milan, Italy, to meet in person in Houston, Texas. So that's how I prepared uh, ahead of time, like I did for my phone interview. Uh, but, you know, we talk about you know, eye contact and taking your time answering questions, uh, you know, taking a pause. And taking a pause is okay. We don't have to rush in into... Uh, an answer just to try to fill time. And trust me, I've done that many times. So I speak from many experiences of just trying to fill the fill the time and find myself in an answer uh, in a rabbit hole uh, that I didn't intend to, to be in. So I have the transportation from the hotel to the Tenaris headquarters. North American headquarters in Houston, Texas, right next to the Sheridan Hotel, uh, and, and next to the Intercontinental Hotel as well. So open the door, go in, look for uh, where the business is at. And so in our conversations with myself and, and Tenaris, I was told which, which floor of the building, because there were multiple floors. I think there was maybe 10 or 11 floors, uh, stories uh, of, of this particular building. So went in, went to where the uh, elevators were, press the up button, go in, go to the floor. I believe it was the seventh floor at yeah, the, 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 this, uh, this particular uh, business Tenaris was on. And so I went up. Once I arrived, there was a person sitting at a desk and they said, hi, how are you? Uh, how can I help you? Hi, my name is Justin Allen Hayes. I applied to the marketing specialist role. I'm here to meet with person one and two. So this individual said, okay, I'll be right with you. You know, please take a seat. So I took a seat, come back. The individual comes back and says, oh, I'm going to write this way. Takes me to this huge conference room. And at this point in my career, uh, I had only been in a conference room for the interview at the Timken Company, and this was this massive room, 
tons of chairs, uh, you know, TV screens, uh, you know, all the audio and visual equipment, uh, what was there. And so here I am, I was told to pick a seat. So I picked the seat where I felt I would be the most comfortable and where if there were going to be multiple people, I could, you know, turn to the left and turn to the right and look to the center uh, or next to me, what have you. And so all these are like maybe minute, minuscule things, but these are things that actually happen. And so we get so focused on us and answering the questions that you know, where we sit, how, how high the chair is, how low the chair is. Uh, where where we are in relation to the other seats and where other individuals. Uh, meaning, uh, when I walked in, I had seen two notebooks at two different seats. And so I was able to take that information subconsciously and place myself where I, I thought that uh, I wanted to, to sit. So once all that was through, the time for the interview came and went a few minutes went by and so I'm thinking you know what what's going on you know all the other interviews all the other conversations they were very prompt what's going on and so little did I know there was a volcano in Iceland that had erupted and that eruption had went up into the sky so you know lava and and, and, and steam and smoke and the remnants uh, of a volcano uh, explosion happened. And there were many airlines and many flights in Europe uh, and across the world that had been canceled and moved to different dates and different times. And so that's really tie in, you know, the Fall Out Boy, uh, the, the song We Didn't Start to Fire in the uh, the change up. And so the change up comes in where uh, the hiring manager says, you know, there's this volcano, uh, it erupted. Uh, the Barbara, who who's the director, she was supposed to fly you know, to Houston to meet with you. She wasn't able to because all the flights were canceled in this period of time. So we're going to meet with you here in person and then we're going to have you meet with her via uh, a program like Zoom on these huge 10-foot screens, two 10-foot screens on each side, and then there's a television in the middle. And so that's the change up, flying a thousand miles, thinking I was gonna meet with people in person and how a volcano had an impact on somebody in Northeast Ohio, myself, in the interview process. And so we talk about you know, uh, being able to be adaptive, adaptable, and, and taking a situation and making the best of it. So I was literally told in the conference room, this was happening in a matter of about five minutes. So in about five minutes time, the TV screen came on, the big screens on the side, uh, projector screens came, came down from the, from the ceiling. And a, a couple of the individuals, the hiring manager and one of their colleagues came into the room where those two notebooks were at. And then all of a sudden, I see myself on the big screen, uh, which was obviously, you know, from the, the, the camera. And then I see uh, the uh, hiring manager's manager, the director, Barbara, in Milan, Italy, in her office. And so when I talked about earlier, positioning myself in my seat uh, so I could be able to uh, be comfortable looking people in the eye, answering questions to the left, to the right, in front of me, etc. Here was something different. Here was the change up. So I was to also have to look to the camera, where the camera was at. So Barbara, the director in Milan, Italy, uh, would see that I am speaking to her or directly to her or through the camera, uh, you know, through the, the, the through the through the audiovisual program. And so this interview lasted about an hour. Uh, they asked me questions. I answered the best I could. I asked a few questions, and the other change up the interesting part. Uh, 
from where we were, where I, we, I guess, meaning me, uh, the buildings where I had worked, there it was non-smoking, so you weren't able to smoke inside the building. I had to be you know, so many feet outside, outside the the um, you know the entrances or exits of the building. And so here I am, flew down to Houston, Texas. I'm having an interview with people in the room, so in person, as well as again audiovisually through. Uh, you know, through the audiovisual program, looking at the camera, and then Barbara was looking at her camera and, and, and speaking uh, to, to me. And smoking was allowed in the offices where Barbara was at in Milan, Italy. So here I am, again, went through uh, all the details of how I got to where I was at. And this individual, the hiring manager's manager, is having a cigarette, just smoking as we're having this conversation. And I'm scared, I'm nervous, I'm fearful. I never uh, had traveled anywhere for an interview in person. Um, I, my, uh, I was still you know, abusing alcohol on weekends. And so I wasn't at the point where I am today. Uh, is, uh, and so, my mindset was just completely thrown for a loop or a change up in that here I am a thousand miles away and I'm interviewing for a position and this individual is like having a cigarette just like you're at a party or at a club or a bar. So that was the huge change up for me. And so what's what's all this mean for you? What does this mean for uh, you know, friends and family or colleagues or you know, students that at school or faculty members it's that you just really have to be ready for anything and since covid you know the audiovisual the the video the zooms and and those types of meetings those are more commonplace so i think more of us are comfortable with with those types of uh, interviews the, the zoom interview so going from you know the phone interview after the application process to uh, you know, a Zoom interview or whatever that program that you know they could use uh, Teams or uh, you know other programs that uh, d does the same thing. Uh, so that's one thing that's different today than when uh, you know speaking you know well over ten years ago when this happened. And from that time on, both personally and professionally. That experience made me grow so much. So I ended up taking the uh, being offered the position, taking the position, accepting the position, and moving uh, down there and, and and worked there, and was able to do some work in Milan, Italy. So all that kind of came together, uh, and it was just very, uh, you know, as I sit back today, over ten years ago, and look at that time. Again, I was scared, I was fearful, I was nervous, had all kinds of stress and anxiety uh, for many reasons, and I made it through. And so let the message be today and every day that we're gonna be able to make it through, that a situation that may happen that we have a little bit of control over, or like this for me, didn't have much control over uh, you know, the location of the, the interview. I wasn't able to say, oh, no, 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 I'm, I, I've never had an interview uh, audiovisually, so I, you know, I can't meet with Barbara you know, kind of audiovisually through the screens and, and the camera. Uh, I mean, I could have said it. I know there was like a stop in me from saying it, uh, but I just went with the, went, went, went the flow. Uh, and so there's gonna be times in, in your lives and, and then mine many times where we just have to, we just have to go with the flow and we have to, and here's the hard part, we have to believe in ourselves and we have to be confident in our ability and who we are and what we stand for. And so whether that's a, uh, a job that you're applying to, uh, whether that is a presentation uh, you know, either at an office in person or through Zoom uh, or 
at a, uh, at a class. Maybe you're in a digital marketing class and you're asked for part of the, uh, the syllabus for one of the projects is to give a presentation. Go, go with the flow. Practice. Try to understand the topic and topics and, and the flow of you know, what three or five things you want to discuss. And then believe in yourself. That's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do is to, to believe in myself. And I still struggle with that. Because I look for making the big bang, for making uh, making things happen, doing something that's a little bit outside the norm. So earlier this year, again, with our uh, mission trip to a war zone in Ukraine, for many reasons, that was a lot of me going with the flow after making the decision uh, to, to do it for the organization to take voices for voices 6,000 miles away here from uh, you know, where, where we're, we're based here in Northeast Ohio and Stowe, Ohio, uh, to bring the voices of everybody to the front, to the limelight, to give those individuals a platform, an ability to share who they are, their story, their experiences, in the hopes to connect to connect with you, to connect with me. I learned so much through the interviews and discussions that, that, that we have. Uh, continue to, to learn. And just like the change up with that interview process, the way it went, I, I went with the flow. I believe in myself and my ability. And at the end of the day, that's all that's all we can really do. We can, you know, give it give it the best. Because there's a lot of factors, a lot of things that we don't we don't control and we, we can't influence so much. So that's where the house of you, the brand of the house of you, in the two books that I, I've written, uh, you know, the you know, the five workforce tips for a successful career, as well as the mental health story and journey of the house of you prescription for living all those are just believing in in myself that i could help somebody and that's that's the goal yesterday today tomorrow and for the rest of the days that uh, i am on earth and able to share an experience so hopefully this program today has been enlightening at some level. Uh, so whether it's the fall, fallout boy or whether it's the change up or whether it's the Houston, Texas, uh, the traveling, you know, being paid, uh, paid back for, uh, you know, travel expenses or you know, the interview itself and how that went from an in-person uh, interview to an in-person and an audiovisual uh, interview and how I was able to overcome all those, all that anxiety, all that stress and do the best that I can. And that's what we're doing here, Voices for Voices. We're doing the best we can to share and help as many people as possible. We've already shared my goal of 3 billion people I've already shared Voices for Voices with 3 billion people over the course of my lifetime and beyond just in this past year. By being in a position to sit and to be seen on a television show that is broadcast across the world. And let that be hopefully a message to uh, you can dream I can dream. We can help people. We can help ourselves. We can help our families. So do what you love. Have that passion. Believe in yourself. And be okay taking the answer no. Because life isn't always a straight line, a straight path. 
The answers aren't always yes. I've received my fair share of no's and continue. But we continue on. We continue on. And by you tuning in today and sharing this episode in our podcast and TV show and attending our events, the A Brand New Day Gal in October, or downloading and donating the replay of the A Brand New Day event that we had, just the third annual, just a few short weeks ago. I want to thank each and every one of you who has tuned in at any point uh, of this this process that, that we're going through. And this process is Voices for Voices. Thank you and good day.